Guys, what's going on? Josh Sullivan here. Right, it's my first day of vlogging. It's gonna be my first video on YouTube. The process of creation starts with thought, an idea, conception, visualization. If you see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. If you have a clear picture in your head of something that is gonna happen, a, a clear belief in that it will happen no matter what. Thought is the first level of creation. If you can see it here, next comes the word. And you have the courage enough to speak it, it will happen. I wrote myself a check for $10 million for acting services rendered, and I gave myself uh, five years, or three years maybe, and I put it in my wallet and I kept it there and it deteriorated and deteriorated and stuff. And, uh, and uh, but then just before Thanksgiving 1995, I found out that I was going to make $10 million on it. What is up guys, welcome back to another video. Right, so as you can tell from the title, it is New Car Day. I've been waiting for this time for a very long while now and I can't wait to share it with you guys. What is up guys, welcome back to another video, right? So today I just wanted to talk about my full journey, my story and be proper honest with you guys and just where it all all began, where it all started because I get a lot of questions about like why did you become a YouTuber, why did you start, Why? how do you start your own business, stuff like that. So I think this is going to be pretty helpful and give you a bit of an insight into the background of my thinking and and just like what sort of person I am and what I've had to like overcome, what I've done, the highs, the lows, all that sort of good stuff. So I've I actually got a bit of a note. I have actually got a bit of a notepad down here. So if I do relate to this, I just don't want to miss anything off. Do you know what I mean? I want to make sure I get everything in there relating back from a, a very long time ago. So anyway, let's get straight into it. Let's get started. So I think we'll start off when I was a teenager. So when I was 13 years old, I've always had a bit of entrepreneurial spirit about me. Like I've always wanted to sort of have my own business. Like even in school, other students and that would say like, you'd be a businessman one day, which is pretty stupid, pretty ridiculous, isn't it, at that age? But what age is 13, like year eight, year nine, um, with my mate in summer or school holidays, like we used to go and knock on neighbors' doors and clean cars. So I think we used to charge like four or five quid, clean the car, use their water. So it's not really costing us anything apart from our time and energy. They're the fun days, you know what I mean? Probably made like, only did it a few times, but probably made like 50 quid, something like that. So it's nice just to make a bit of your own money, isn't it? And like, so as some of you guys are aware, like my dad and my granddad are very successful people, so I think I just want to follow in their footsteps, and quite big footsteps to be honest, but I want to make sure I make that that on my own, and not just get handed down stuff, not get passed down, do you know what I mean? I want to actually work for it and earn it myself, and do something a bit different, and something that I enjoy as well, so anyway, that's when I was 13, when I was 14, I actually set up my own eBay account, and I used to sell old clothes on there. So like any clothes I could get my hands on, like any of my old mum's clothes, my dad's clothes, anyone's clothes that were worth a bit of value, I'd try and sell them on eBay, make a bit of money. I think in the end, like my granddad gave me this um, job lot of jeans, which he had that was like 30 pairs of jeans, something they were like designer, I think selected home, I think they were called. Um, and I sold them for like 30 quid each, so. I made a couple of hundred quid to be honest, not bad at all, I was pretty buzzing with that and from 14 to 16 I think I had like two grand or something in my PayPal account and at that at that, and at that that and time as well, you're under 16 so I'm not legally supposed to have a PayPal account so I lied to have a PayPal account so I, I got a limit on that account and I couldn't get the money out of the account which was annoying so I actually had to say to him oh look I'm not 16 yet, and then they actually had to give it to me. So they closed the account, I got the money, happy days. Then when I was like 15 as well, what I did was in school, this happened with a lot of people I think, um, I actually decided to sell sweets and chocolates and drinks, 
which is the one. That was such a good time in my life. I proper enjoyed that. I probably would have got better grades in school if I didn't focus too much on making money. But at the end of the day, there was always something like in me there that just that entrepreneur, that, that thing that pushed me to make my own money. And I was always good at numbers as well. I was always good at profit margins, calculating profits and losses. And like, is this gonna be worth my money? Like what percentage profit I'm actually making? I was always good with maths and stuff like that. So um, I knew that if I bought four bars of chocolate for a quid, I could easily sell them for two quid, 50% margin which is very nice, very big margins out like, even Sulfit struggles to make 50% margins, do you know what I mean? So happy days, I was making probably like 60 quid a week in school, which is pretty good, maybe a tenner a day actually. Yeah, about 50, 60 quid a week in school, and I did that for like a year, so I had quite a bit of money saved up, well, probably like a grand or whatever, but at that time, it's like bloody hell. It's quite a bit of money. You don't realise how much money that is at that age. So, yeah, I had a bit of money there. I just basically spent it all on trainers. Was into trainers at the time. But then when when school finished, like I was a bit annoyed because I didn't I didn't have any money coming in from like selling chocolates and sweets and that. Um, I actually never got caught once as well, which I'm very proud of. So if any of you teachers are watching now, yeah, in that last year I sold sweets and chocolates in school and it was the one. I bet some of you know as well, I bet some of you knew all the wrappers on the fucking tables and that. Um, but yeah, that was when I was a 15. Then when I left um, school, I just went to college. I went to do sport, business and IT. I did pretty well in school, not that good, but I got like five Bs, four Cs, so it was passable, nothing amazing. I was a, I was focusing too much on selling chocolates and sweets, to be honest. Um, yeah, I went to business, obviously didn't have any money coming in, so I started working at Connacht Cafe when I was 16, uh, just part-time, like two, three times a week, earned me a little bit of money to get me by, and I learned so much from working in that cafe. Like, you learn so much from people, like interacting with people from a young age is such a good thing to do and I'll recommend it to anyone. Like if you're 14, 15, 16, go and work in your local shop, your local cafe, your local restaurant and just start chatting to people because you progress so much, you get a lot more confidence and you know how to like socialize with people and it's, it definitely helps a lot. So I'm so grateful that I did that, it's, it's very good. I got involved with some really good people and like, yeah, you might not make loads of money, but you, you you get relationships and you start to meet new people and it's pretty good. Like all the old ladies were always chatting to me, it was the one. Um, but yeah, I went to finish college then and in this first year of college, that's when I started getting into the gym. So I started just smashing the gym four, five, six times a week because at college you've got loads of free time, haven't you? Um, so I was just smashing it. I didn't really know anything about diet. I was just watching um, like YouTube videos like Mike Chang and just smashing out as much gym as, as I could, to be honest, like trying to get as strong as I could. And I went from like being a bit skinny fat to just bulking up massive. So I must have been eating a lot of calories. Like I think I went from like 13 stone to like 16 stone in like 18 months or something. So a lot of muscle but quite a bit of fat as well which was a bit annoying made me feel a bit insecure do you know what i mean i didn't want to be that big power lifter bodybuilder guy i wanted just to be like an athletic slim muscular physique like you see in films and stuff like that but i really enjoyed the gym anyway and then after i left college i did pretty well in college as well i think i got sport was a diploma so i got distinction star distinction star and in business i got a b and in ict i got a b as well so not too shabby pretty happy with that and business i always wanted to do business so i never wanted to actually go to university to study it though i just wanted to start my own business because i know that you can learn so much from just on the job from actually doing instead of learning and having all this this stuff taught to you from lecturers and professors have they actually ever had a business more than likely probably not so they're chatting out of their arse they don't actually know what is actually happening in the real world so that's why i was learning from working in the cafe i was learning from the owner in there like which really helped me as well and i just knew one day i wanted to start my own business it was always a dream of mine always there's always like some a fire inside of me saying josh you're gonna have your own business one day you're gonna 
you're going to be successful. And I think that is, not everyone's got that, not everyone does have that, but I think that fire inside is important and you need to find it from a, a young age. And I didn't know what I wanted to do after college. Like, I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do at all. So as soon as I'd left college, I think I had a week holiday in Lanzarote with my girlfriend at the time. And then after that, straight into a full-time job. And the place where I was working, it was one of the biz it was a business my dad's business had acquired. Um, it was called Maryburn. And it was based about an hour's drive away in North Wales from where I was at the time. So I had to wake up pretty early in the morning, drive there. You'll probably get stuck in traffic quite a lot of the time. And yeah, I'd, I'd worked there for about, I think I worked there for 10 months and when I was working there, I just knew like, this wasn't for me. Like this this eight to four, nine to five job was just, it was getting me down a bit, do you know what I mean? Because at this time I started watching YouTube content as well. Just at this time when I turned like 18, 19, and I, I found Christian Guzman, which I'm sure some of you will be aware of. He's a massive fitness lifestyle YouTuber and he just inspired and motivated me so much. I was like looking at this guy thinking, he's got to be 30s, 30. And I found out he was like 22, 23. And I was like 18, 19 at the time. I was like, how is he doing this? Like he's got a BMW M4, he's got his own business. He's absolutely smashing it. He's got his own gym. I was like, this guy has goals. This guy is inspiring me. So I thought if he can do it, then why can't I? And that is what you have to ask yourself, guys. If you, you're looking up to somebody, like whether it be a sports person, someone famous, or someone really successful in a business, just look, just ask yourself, like, if they can do it, then why can't I? That's what I was asking myself every time. And I, I kind of got into a bit of a rut, to be honest, because I was going to work and I just didn't enjoy it. I wasn't enjoying it. I was waking up early. I was getting stuck in traffic. I was still managing to get to the gym. But when I was at work, I was like looking at YouTube videos like that was exciting me like all all that excited me was the gym at that time and YouTube content so I, I kind of got into a vicious spiral I started getting anxiety and I was getting like pretty bad anxiety and um, it was the Christmas of like 2014 or 2015 I think and I think I went away with my family we just went to like somewhere in the UK for like a Christmas break and I got back and I just didn't want to go back to work. So I didn't want to be waking up dead early. The mornings were dead dark. The weather was horrible. It was freezing. I was just like, oh, man, past this. Like, I don't want to go, man. I, I actually don't want to. I was actually, like, making myself physically ill from going to work. And I know it might sound, like, pretty pathetic at that age, but I kind of just knew there was more to life than than that, do you know what I mean? And I think there's a lot of people who can relate out there. You're going to, to jobs that you don't love, that is making you physically ill. Like I was getting bad anxiety, like I started getting blurry vision and I thought there was something really bad wrong with me. It turns out it was just my anxiety like triggering, triggering that, which is ridiculous, isn't it? And obviously I went to the hospital, I went to the doctors, got checked and everything. and. It's just something that you have to, I ha, I've had to deal with and I still deal with to this day. A lot of people don't know that I do actually have anxiety. Um, and I think a big part of it stems from as well. It's not just from the job and from the work. That's probably what triggered it because I knew there was something better out there. But a lot of you people probably won't know. But when I was young, like five, six years old, I had a younger sister and she actually died um, from leukemia, cancer. Um, so I didn't really deal with that when I was younger. I kind of dealt with that in my late teens. So I didn't really, obviously when you're that young, you don't really know, do you? You just kind of have to deal, everyone deals with it in different ways. Um, so obviously because I know that, I know now that you can get ill and actually die from disease and stuff like, I'm always a bit paranoid and a bit worried about my own health. Like it could have easily happened to me. I'm so thankful that I am here and I'm alive, but it could have easily have happened to me and um, I still think like, you know, like if there's, there's like a something wrong with you, like like a little bit of a nick, like you might feel a bit dizzy one day and then you kind of just ca catastrophize, like my mind catastrophizes now because obviously I know my sister died. So it's kind of a bit of health anxiety as well as normal anxiety, but I have actually managed to deal with it really well now and everything is going 
is going good so I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy honestly anxiety is horrible like it's hard to explain it unless you're actually going through it so it's a real thing and I think the best thing to do is just speak to someone speak to someone about it and write stuff down and just try and have a routine as well. I think a routine really does help. Tyson Fury talks about that, having a routine, having goals, it really does help you yeah, get over it. And you're gonna be 100% fully complete because your mind does have the tendencies to do, to worry and stuff like that, but you will definitely get better and you can still smash life. Honestly, you can still smash life. So anyway, let's get into a bit more of a positive mood now. That's probably my lowest point you know when I was 19 working at that job waking up hating my job having like anxiety not wanting to get out of bed in the morning I knew there was a brighter path but I just didn't really know what I wanted to do so after that I actually went and started working for my dad just for a few months um, instead of having to travel all the way to Wales I was just going to Manchester so it was like half an hour drive wasn't too bad um, but to be honest again that there wasn't much work for me to do like there was work, but my dad's been working there for 30 years and he's very successful in what he's done, but he didn't enjoy his job either. Like his, his dad just put him into that business. Like he didn't have a choice. So I'm very lucky that I've actually got a choice. Do you know what I mean? But he worked there for 30 years, very successful. But yeah, I went there for a few months. It was just, it's not great working with family. I'll tell you that now. Like it's, it's just a bit weird. Like my uncle was there as well. My other uncles, and it just wasn't for me, so um, I kind of decided I needed to move on, leave that place, only worked there for a few months, and I decided to train to become a personal trainer. Um, so that was like a two month process. I think I started it in 2015, November, um, and then finished it in February 2016. Yeah, I think that's right. So it's like just um, a fast track course at my local gym. And I met loads of cool people on there, to be honest. Like, it was such a good two months of my life. I really enjoyed it. Me and new people learning about how the body works. And I actually knew loads of stuff already from YouTube videos that I'd watched. Um, but it was good, like, actually learning how to coach someone, how to train someone, and how to program workouts and stuff like that. I actually got a job straight after I'd finished the course as well um, for a company called Profit Personal Training, which was a bit of a scam I'm not gonna lie it was a bit of a scam kind of sell, sold you this story do you know what I mean and you kind of fell for it a bit loads of other people worked for him as well but it wasn't for me there either so at this point I mean it's not working out well is it like I'm trying loads of new stuff and yeah maybe I should have given it more time at this profit personal training place but it, I just you know when you have that gut feeling inside you you know that this isn't for me I kind of knew you your gut is always right you go honestly it's always that's one thing if you take anything away from this video go with your gut feeling because if it doesn't feel right most of the time it's not give it a bit of a chance yeah but if it doesn't feel right most of the time it's not i hope you stick around to the end of the video it's going to be a longer video than usual guys but i just want to explain everything in detail and and go through everything because i'm sure some of these stories can help you out so um I actually went and got another job as a personal trainer in another gym and it was okay, do you know what I mean? But I kind of realised that personal training wasn't for me, which is mad. I proper love the gym, proper love the gym and training myself, but training other people who aren't motivated, who aren't really arsed, they just want to chat to you, it's not ideal. It's not ideal. And there's loads of personal trainers out there. I've got loads of mates who are personal trainers and that's not to put any shit on them. I, it just wasn't for me. I knew, I kind of knew I wanted to be a YouTuber at this point. I knew that I wanted to create content online and I was just procrastinating about it. So then I actually went on holiday, was thinking about it and I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. I'm actually just going to fully go for it, go all in and start this YouTube YouTube journey out and see see what happens see if I can make make a life for myself and and do something that I actually enjoy and see if I actually do enjoy making videos first of first of all so May 2016 I picked up the camera made my first vlog you're gonna see a clip here now guys what's going on Josh Sullivan here right it's my first day of vlogging it's gonna be my first video on YouTube and 
honestly, I was so awkward in front of the camera at first. It was not ideal. Um, as well, I wasn't just vlogging. Like I wasn't just going out of full-time work into vlogging. I went back to working in the restaurant at Connacht Cafe at this point, working like 30 hours a week just to earn a decent amount of money. And I actually enjoyed it there. I enjoyed working there more than I did working in like my dad's place or as a personal trainer, which is mad really. I love like chatting to people. And I think something that's important when you're working is you wanna work with people you enjoy working with. And I really enjoyed, I really liked the people there. So big shout out to the guys at Connor Cafe Oct, Musty, Halil, you guys are honestly so sad. I always go in today and it's just such a good positive environment. And I never forget that, like it's gonna live with me for a long time. Um, but yeah, so I was working there and then I started my YouTube channel whilst I was working there. And it was mainly gonna be about my fitness journey to start off with because at this point, I wanted to lose weight. I wanted to lose fat. I was a bit, I was still a bit insecure with my body. Um, I was going to the gym, I was smashing it, but I was carrying a little bit of excess body fat. So I decided, I made a plea to myself. I was like, Josh, you need to smash this. You need to lose some weight. And what made me accountable was doing YouTube videos. So I think I started at 220 pounds in May and I got down to in September, 194, 195 pounds, so 25 pounds, 26 pounds in that amount of time. I'm pretty proud of myself. And that was all from just eating in a calorie deficit, tracking my macros, smashing the gym, keeping my steps up as much as possible. And after that, I felt so much more confidence in myself, so much more self-belief that I know I can stick to something now. I can stick to this, I can smash it. Like having a body transformation has a big impact on your overall life. Honestly, such a big impact. So I definitely recommend getting into it if you are struggling with your body and you're not really happy with what, how you look at the minute. So at this point on YouTube, I was just kind of making vlogs, like fitness vlogs, fitness tips, day in the life sort of things, but they were rubbish, honestly. So if you go back, on, they're still all on my YouTube channel now. If you just go to oldest to newest, on my YouTube videos, you can go and watch them and see how they how they were like. I'm so awkward in front of the cameras, and I'm not like chilled how I am now. It's mad. Um, it's just weird. The videos were so bad as well, and I was thinking, oh, when am I going to get this breakthrough? When am I going to get this video? Do you know what I mean? But it was never going to happen if these videos were so shit. Um, December 2016, I decided to do a 10,000 calorie challenge video because I, it was like the time people were making them and I thought they looked really fun. So I've set aside a day, smashed that challenge. I felt so bad, so, so bad after it. But that was the first video that kind of got a bit of traction and got a few views. I think it was on, you got like 10,000 views. My first video to get over 10,000 views and I was buzzing. I was so excited. I was like, bloody hell, that's loads. Um, such a good feeling, you know, when you, and you like film something and you put it out there and people actually watch it and they enjoy it. It's one of the best feelings, like, I, re I really enjoy it. And I, and I realized that I proper enjoyed making content and making videos as well. I have such a good feeling, it got me hooked, got me addicted. So moving on to 2017 now, I'd been making videos for like eight months or something. I was still making them, probably not as consistent as I, as I am now. I'm not do I wasn't doing three a week, I was probably doing one or two a week which is still enough, still good. My content wasn't great, but I was still doing it all around fitness. Um, in April 2017, I decided, I think I was going on holiday again, um, just for like a short, short break. And I decided I'm gonna do a bit of a fashion video. I've never done a fashion video. I just did an ASOS haul, um, just some bits I was ordering for holiday. So I thought I'll try it on and, and put it on the camera and see what people think of it. And that video was like, the Ellis video's doing sick. Like, people obviously like to see me try on clothes. There's a bit of a, I thought, there's a bit of a niche. Uh, like, I, I was just searching on YouTube, like, men's fashion hauls, men's clothing videos. There wasn't many about, to be honest with you. There wasn't many guys doing try on clothing hauls. So I thought, there's a bit of a gap in the market here. Let me exploit it. Let me explore it. So, after then, I just started making more fashion videos, basing my content more around fashion. Yeah, I was still doing fitness, I was still doing the day in the lives, but I was doing a lot more fashion content and I was getting into fashion a lot more myself as well because in the end, like, 
I, the end goal was to start a clothing brand. That's what I wanted to do in the end. Um, so in 2017 is when I actually started Sulfit Clothing as well. And it was, looking back, I probably should have waited a bit and built my subscribers, built my loyal fans up a bit more. But I just wanted to start it small and see what happened. So I started in May 2017. It's been going now three years. And the first two years, there's like no growth at all. Like it's very slow. But now, like we're actually starting to see a proper business form. So very exciting times and it wouldn't be possible without you guys. So anyway, I got a bit sidetracked in there. So 2017 was a pretty good year for me. I found out that fashion videos is something, one of my strong points, one of my strengths. And I think one thing with YouTube and online space is especially you have to focus on your strengths. You have to play to your strengths. I was watching a Mike Thurston video the other day and he's a proper fitness guy and he makes fitness tutorials and content. And he played to his strengths because he's got such good genetics. He's in such good shape because he's worked so hard. People are gonna want, want to watch you if you're in good shape, if you're in the fitness space. Whereas in fashion, it doesn't really matter what sort of shape you're in. It's just, it's about your sort of style and your personality and how you put it across. So I wasn't in the best shape myself. So I thought, you know, let's, let's delve into fashion more and see what can happen. Um, so I was still smashing the gym at this time. I did a 90 day transformation. I got the leanest I'd ever got. I think I got down to 174.6 pounds, which looked so ridiculously skinny for me. I'll put a picture on the screen now. It was like a Christian Guzman 90 day challenge. So I did that. I started at 196 and lost 20 pounds. And everyone around me was like, bloody hell, you look ill, you look unhealthy. I felt pretty bad as well. Dead tired all the time. I was shredded, but I think my natural genetics and my body type is not, yeah, I can't go below like 184. 184 is like the lightest I should be. Just for my shape, I'm, I've got like wider hips. I'm a bit more of a bigger build, so yeah. Looking back, I'm so glad I did it. And I'm probably never gonna get that lean ever again or that skinny, but it's nice to do things and push yourself and challenge yourself, isn't it? Right, moving on now to 2018. Um, and 2018 was just where I started focusing even more on fashion content. So towards the end of 2017, I'd made a few best fitting videos, which I'm sure you guys will know me for. Um, like best fitting t-shirts, best fitting jeans, and they smashed. I think the best fitting jeans video was my first video to get 100K views. Um, so it just started. The problem with my videos is they're a lot more searchable in content, so they take time to grow, where some people's viral content just goes like that, do you know what I mean? Mine are a bit slow burners, so they do take time to get ranked in search and then for people to watch them. So I don't really have that many massive viral videos, but I do have quite a few that are slow burners. People are still watching them to this day, and I think that is one thing that is great about how to and styling videos and fashion videos the very searchable content. So that, that I'm so glad I got into that space, otherwise I'd probably be still stuck on under a thousand subscribers, which you can't make a living from really. You need to be able to, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to make money and make a living from what I enjoyed doing. And now I actually can. So 2018 was another pretty good year for me. I was focusing more on fashion. Um, I was still working at the cafe I was doing more hauls, I was trying to try new content, like outfits, videos, and yeah, I was just seeing what worked. And I think I grew, at the start of that year, I think I was on like 2,000 subscribers. And I think by the end of the year, I was on like 17,000 subscribers. So it was starting to pick up a bit now, it was starting to get a bit more momentum. And yeah, it was just enjoying the process. Obviously, you become impatient, but with this whole game, you have to be patient like it's out of your control how well these videos do so you just have to try and make them to your best ability and then see what happens and not put too much pressure on it and not to and not think about the views too much just focus on it making content that you enjoy and trying to connect with people because at the end of the day like i won't, I won't be anywhere without you guys like you guys actually feel like you're my mates do you know what i mean like if i met you I'd just be so relatable and I'd get on with you so well. So maybe one thing in the future, we'll definitely do a meetup or something. I think that would be class. Um, moving on to 2019 now, and this is probably 
the breakthrough year for me. So um, 2019, I think I started the year on like 16,000 subscribers. Like I said, I was in Jamaica with my family. I know I go on a lot of holidays. Don't give me any more shit for that. But something that I love to do is travel and explore new places. So I was in Jamaica and I set myself uh, a couple of goals just to travel to a couple of new places, keep growing on YouTube and grow sulfur as well so I could actually leave working in the cafe. And I was just smashing content out. I was trying to create the best possible content for you guys, the most searchable. And I was doing three videos a week. I didn't miss a week. Honestly, guys, that is one thing. If you want to do something like this or you want to start a business or something, you have to be consistent. That is one of the things I've learned over the years consistency is power honestly it's powerful and um, just keep up keep up because so many people get left behind i knew so many people who were doing youtube the same time as me they were on the same amount of subscribers and then they just binned it off you just have to keep going be patient persevere it's how you get shit done not like how i was at personal training i was no good at personal training i didn't enjoy it but I've kept going with videos because I actually enjoy it. You'll know when you enjoy something because you'll never give up. Even if you get nothing out of it, you don't get any rewards, you'll just keep going until you do. Um, but yeah, 2019 was a very good year. I started seeing more sales through Sulfur as well. Um, and the Black Friday event in 2019 was, was class. Like... I think I was in Abu Dhabi at the time watching the F1 with my dad because we said that we wanted to go and watch an F1 race. And I just kept getting notifications from Shopify, orders coming through, and I was just, I was, I was so buzzing. Like it was finally starting to take shape. And um, 2019 was what the year, like 2018 was when I met Laura, but 2019 was when we first died, like it was official couple, do you know what I mean? And she, she's just like a proper good good girlfriend you know like she helps and supports so much and I think that is one thing you need to you need to have behind you like have that support system behind you like have supporting friends supporting family girlfriend boyfriend whoever it is they need to be supporting because my girlfriend before that she was kind of a bit needy wasn't backing me fully I don't think she expected me to do as well as I I knew I could do so kind of have to get that negativity not that she was negative but you kind of just have to get that that you know that in the back of the mind they're they're not fully backing and supporting you so i kind of had to get that out of my, my mind and just move on and focus on myself and having someone there supporting you is so good and then you're not getting distracted either by other girls going out all the time partying for me partying and going out all the time it's it's not really my scene. Like I've tried it, I've done it, I've been out to revs. Trust me, I've been out quite a few times, got the bottles involved, but maybe I'll do it a bit more later in my life. But for now, I wanna focus on making sick content for you guys, traveling. I proper enjoy traveling to new different places, um, focusing on sulfate, growing sulfate clothing as a brand. And yeah, just, just enjoying life as well. Uh, not necessarily going out getting pissed all the time because I get the worst hangovers ever. Honestly, I can't hack it, you know. I can't fucking hack it. So I'd rather spend my money on like going on holidays and stuff like that. And obviously cars as well. I absolutely love my cars. You guys know I love my cars. So anyway, 2019 was a sick year. Um, it was the breakthrough year for me, definitely. I think I grew from 15 to 35 thousand subscribers and i started posting a lot more on instagram as well um i started focusing my content a lot more around fashion rather than fitness using more hashtags getting more shares on different pages um and my account just started to blow up like it honestly started i think i was on fifteen thousand followers in march 2019 and then by the end i was on like sixty thousand. So I grew like 45K in eight, nine months, which I thought was sick. And I think for you, you just have to find out what you're good at and what people like seeing you do as well. Like for me, people obviously like my style. They like my fashion. They like me seeing my fashion and lifestyle and stuff like that as well. So 
you have to play to your strengths like I've said um, before but yeah 2019 was a very decent year I started to get more brand deals through more brands were starting to connect with me and I started to earn a lot more money through my YouTube channel and through my Instagram so I was getting brand deals I was selling more through Sulfur. Um I was affiliate marketing obviously YouTube money which is hardly anything for a small channel it's like 150 quid a month in 2019 anyway which is obviously not much but it's better than nothing um, and then we're moving on to 2020 so 2019 I decided to take take a gamble take a risk and I realized I was making enough money from YouTube now to cover my my expenses and I could fully focus all my attention on sulfur clothing on YouTube now I could leave working in the cafe so 2019 I decided to hand in my notice leave the cafe and it was taking a bit too much time and energy like working in a cafe is hard work you know like it's tiring like running about with plates taking orders trying to remember stuff it might seem like an easy job yeah but it's quite tiring and I could feel I was getting more tired and stuff like that and I just thought this is it's taking energy that I can be using into something else as much as I enjoyed it it's taking I could be using this into something else now um but yeah so I left in 2019 2020 guys fresh start and January got off to a pretty bad start to be honest I had like hardly any stock on my sulfate website of joggers so it was like one of the worst months I've done in the past like year or so uh, revenue and profit wise I was like oh have I made the right decision what is going on here like well, obviously it was my own fault for not having enough stock um, so February I got the stock in and had my best month in February for sulfur just because I was focusing a lot more attention on it I was starting to run Facebook ads retargeting to you guys who add to the basket and don't buy if you add to cart and don't check out mate you are going to get an ad or an email sent to you so make sure you buy from sulfur guys support the channel just i was just learning more about the business and how it worked so we obviously with the pandemic that's happened i think it was march in the uk where we got locked down i thought bloody hell this is going to affect my business so much i'm not going to get any sales great it actually had the total opposite effect total opposite like march april April, May, June, July have all been outstanding months for me. Like from January to June, I'd already smashed last year's full sales, which is ridiculous. But obviously because a lot more people are on the phones, a lot more people are on the computers because they're at home shopping online because you obviously can't go out to the shops. So actually it's had a massive impact on my business and I'm so grateful, so thankful. Um, Obviously, it's very sad that's what's happening, but I'm so grateful that my business has not been affected by it and it's actually thriving in these situations. So online is the way to go, guys. Set up an online business and just go for it. Um, but yeah, obviously, it wasn't, just, it wasn't just my sales that was going up as well. My views started to go up. My um, interactions with you guys was going up. You guys really started to enjoy the content and... Now I'm at nearly 50,000 subscribers. We're here August 2020 and 80,000, over 80,000 Instagram followers. It's going nicely. It's not just about the numbers, but it's kind of good to compare from like how well you were doing to like now, isn't it? And just keep trying to improve the content and improve the products on Sulfit. And, and in July, I actually got an email and call from ASOS, as you guys are aware now, to actually become an ASOS ambassador, which I thought, yeah, this will be pretty cool. Like they'll maybe, they'll send me some free clothes, I'll make a video, but they're actually paying me a, a decent amount. I'm not gonna say the amount, but they're actually paying me monthly, like what I couldn't imagine. So it just goes to show that if you keep putting in the work, you'll get noticed by people keep putting in the work becoming good at your own craft you will get noticed by people and don't try and chase things too much don't try and chase the views don't try and chase the likes just do stuff that you're passionate about that you enjoy and when you see something doing well jump on it then jump on that straight away when you see when i saw that fashion was doing well for me i jumped on it straight away and went all in 
all in. You have to go all in. Put all them eggs in one basket and just go fully in. Anyway, guys, that is my journey. That is my story to where I am, where I've got to today. Um, me and Laura are actually moving out in a few months' time as well, so I'm very excited to document that journey, get our own house, and hopefully we'll be getting a Sulfic warehouse soon as well. It's just so much, so much exciting times coming. Obviously, I've got my new car. We've got the ASOS deal. Seems like everything is just perfect for me, but it's still not perfect, guys. There's still days where there's struggles and like there's still days for me where I compare myself to other more successful, bigger people. And I think comparison is a thief of joy, you know, like obviously strive to become better and look up to these people, but don't compare because you're on a different chapter. So if you're on 100 subscribers now, don't compare yourself to me on 47,000 subscribers because we're in completely different stages. You're in chapter one, chapter two. I'm here in chapter 14. And then here you've got like Christian Guzman, Mike Thurston, other people I look up to. They're in like chapter 47 or something. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's the levels. Just don't compare yourself and just try and have as much fun along the journey, as long the process as possible. That's what it's all about. And enjoy life you know what i mean try not to stress try not to worry if you work in a job and it's making you physically ill like i was getting anxiety stressed it's not worth it it's actually not worth it you only got one life to live you need to make the most of it as possible as you can anyway guys that is going to wrap up my video i know it's a really long video a lot longer than usual but i hope you enjoyed i hope you can take away something from it and I appreciate you all, love you all. Hopefully we'll do a meetup soon. If you want to grab anything from Sulfur Clothing, I've got the new one of the new essential tees on here. They're only 12 quid. They're going to be linked in the description. Go and have a look down there. But I'll catch you on the next one, guys. See you later. We really do paint our world with our thoughts and, and our level of self-belief. Visualization works if you work hard. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that's the thing. You can't hard. just visualize and yeah. then, you know, go eat a sandwich.